All right, so we have logged into Tinkercad. Here's my account. You can see I have nice, long, flowy hair. And what I'm going to do is click over here to make a project. And I'm going to create a new design. And that's going to get me to my start point. Tinkercad will give it a strange name. Now you can keep this name or you can change it under this design tab and go down to properties. And under the properties, you can call it whatever you want. And I'm going to call this rocket tutorial because we're going to design a rocket. I'm going to change this license a little bit so that it will work for other people. Anybody can use it, but they can't uh, actually sell it. So we're going to save those changes. And right now I can see my name is changed to Rocket Tutorial. Now, the way Tinkercad works, and you should have already learned some mm -hmm. of this in, in the previous lessons, is that you work on this work plane. This work plane is a flat plane, a flat XY axis. And if we rotate around using these rotate buttons over on the top left, we can actually scroll around and we can see that this is a flat plane. And we work up from this plane to get uh, 3D shapes, to get a 3D view. If we think about it in terms of how our 3D printer works, this little flat plane, this blue plane, is the actual print bed where things actually uh, rest. And, and the height above this plane is going to be um, where the little nozzle on our printer actually moves. It's going to be our z-axis. So we kind of have an x-plane, which is usually kind of left and right, a Y plane, which is kind of up and down along this uh, blue plane, and then we have a Z axis, which is which is kind of up and down, um, going above and below this little blue plane. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make the body of our rocket. A uh, nice choice for a body of a rocket is going to be a cylinder. So I'm going to take a cylinder and I'm going to put it on this plane. I can rotate my view so that I can get a slightly better view. I can zoom in and I can zoom out so that I get a nice uh, view that I want. And I'm going to make this uh, body of the rocket about 32 millimeters on each side. And we can see that I'm doing this, I'm changing the size by using these white squares. These white squares will let you change the size of your object. The smaller black squares let you change the size in, in one direction. The uh, white squares in the corners let you change multiple directions at the same time. Uh, I can come up to this white square that's on the top. and That actually gives me the height of my object. So let me change my view a little bit so that I'm looking from the side. And if I go to this white square on top, I can see my height is 20 millimeters. I want a taller rocket than 20 millimeters. So I'm going to drag this up to, let's say... Uh, 60 millimeters. Now my view didn't let me do that. So what I need to do, I need to zoom out and maybe scroll a little bit around to get a view that will let me get the height that I want. 60 millimeters. So now I have a cylinder. I can see its measurements at any time by moving to a little corner. I go to this little right corner. I can see the X value of 32 millimeters. I can see the Y value of 32 millimeters and I can see the Z value of, uh, of the height of 60 millimeters tall. So this is the body of my rocket. I'm one third of the way there. Now a rocket like this isn't going to be very aerodynamic. I really need to cut through the air so I kind of need a point. I need a pointy shape up top. So to put a pointy shape up top I need to change where my shapes are going. I can come over here to the right hand side and I see a bunch of geometric shapes and these are going to be good for making, uh, these are actually going to be how you uh, design any kind of shape that you want by, by slicing these in different ways. And right away I can see there's, there's a few different options that I have for nose cones. I could do a, an actual cone, I could do a half sphere, or I could do a paraboloid. Now I'm feeling a little crazy so I'm going to click on this paraboloid and I'm going to bring it over to this plane. Now I want to put it up top. I want to put it up here, but every time I move it, it's just moving along this plane, along this blue plane. So what I need to do first before I actually create this shape and put it down is I need to move this blue plane to be up on top of this uh, cylinder. You can see if you're in the plane, if your plane isn't on top of the cylinder, it just thinks that I want to put a nose cone way far in the back. 
way far behind this this um, cylinder. So I, I need to fix that. So let me place that cylinder. That's not what I actually want to put down. That's not actually where I want to put it. So I'm going to hit the delete key to delete that cylinder. And I'm going to move my work plane, this blue plane. To do that, I come up here to this toolbar up in the upper right, and I click on Show Helper Shapes. I can measure shapes sizes with the ruler, or I can click on this work plane. I click on this work plane, and nothing happens until I move over to my actual uh, workspace. And what that does is it shows me this little kind of translucent blue uh, square with a little arrow in it. And what that does is it's showing me where it's going to put the plane. So if I wanted to put the plane that I'm working on on the side of this cylinder, that's where it would be. So right now, if I look at this, I and I clicked, I would be putting my work plane on the side of the cylinder and it would be pointing out towards me. Let me go ahead and do that. So I've moved my work plane. Let me rotate my view around using these arrows in the upper left. I can spin my view around. And my work plane, if you look, is right there along the side of my cylinder. Not quite where I want it to be. To get it where I want it to be, I want it up top. So I click on the work plane, I bring my little uh, mouse over until I'm on top of this cylinder. And I click, and now my view is right up on top of this cylinder where I want my nose cone to go. It's exactly where I want. I can rotate my view up, I can rotate my view down, so I can really see that that work plane did change. And the nice thing about Tinkercad is it always keeps this little blue rectangle down at the bottom, which represents your initial plane, where you've started everything from. Let's get back to a decent view to, to put our nose cone on. So we can click this little home button, this little home, and that'll give kind of a nice overall view of everything that's going on. So to put my nose cone on, I come to this paraboloid, click on it, and I can drag it over and put it right on top of my cylinder. And right now, my nose cone is a lot smaller than my actual cylinder. If I click on my cylinder, and I use these little boxes, this little white box on the, the bottom left, I see that my cylinder is 32 millimeters by 32 millimeters. So that's the diameters of this, of this cylinder. So I need to click on this nose cone, and I can make that measurements the same. I can do 32 millimeters by 32 millimeters. So let me get that size exactly right. All right, so now I know the diameter of my nose cone is the same as my cylinder. But if I rotate around, and even if you, uh, so that you can clearly see, this nose cone isn't directly lined up with my, uh, with my rocket body. So I need to move it. And I can do that with the arrow keys. One push of the arrow will move it by one millimeter. Each one of the tiny little boxes in this grid you see is one millimeter. So I can move it till I get everything all lined up. And from there, from my view, it looks like it's all lined up. I can kind of rotate my camera view. And I can rotate around this little shape and kind of see, yes, it's all lined up. Everything is meeting where it should. So I have this nice little rocket designed. Maybe I want to increase the height of my nose cone a little bit. I can come up to this white dot that's at the top of my cone, and I can click and drag up to increase my height, maybe to 30 millimeters. OK, so I have the general design for my rocket now. What I need to do is group this design together. So I can take my mouse, I can click anywhere, and I can uh, kind of draw a rectangle that encompasses all the shapes that I want to group together into one. So I want to group the nose cone and the body into one shape. So I highlight them all, draw that little rectangle, come up here to the top right, and click on Group. And that will group me together. And now I want to hollow out this rocket. If I'm going to print this thing, I want it to, be, uh, to not use a ton of plastic. I want it to be a little bit light so that maybe we can launch it. So to do that, Ah, uh, we'll learn a little shortcut. A little shortcut involving this little guy that says color and this guy that says hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shape that's now the combination of my cylinder, the body of my rocket, and my nose cone. 
I'm going to hit Control C or Command C to copy this uh, shape. Depends on if you're on Mac or uh, Windows PC. Mac will be Command C, Windows should be Control C. And then to paste this shape down, I'm going to do Command V if you're on a Mac or Control V if you're on a PC. And it creates a shape that's the exact same size as um, my current rocket. I can drag it over and I can see it, it kind of is the exact same as, as what I've currently drawn. Now I need to think about this because I don't actually want this um, thing to be the same size, this second rocket that I copied and pasted to be the same size because I'm going to use a feature of Tinkercad called Hole. So I still have my copied shape, my copied rocket body and cone highlighted, still have it selected, and I'm going to click hole. And that's going to take that and it's going to hollow out everything I just made. So right now, if I downloaded this, this uh, hole that I have would kind of cancel out everything that I just drew. So I want to decrease the size of this hole. I want to decrease the size of my rocket just a little bit. So I'm going to bring it in on two millimeters two millimeters on every side and I'm just changing the size of that hole bringing it in two millimeters on all sides bring it up two millimeters and bring this down two millimeters and then I want to bring the height down just a little bit we'll bring it down four millimeters we'll say okay so what I should have now is a hollowed out rocket it's hard to tell from here. If I look around, all I see is orange. That means that's good. That means that I have a solid rocket. If I scroll around to the bottom view, though, I should be able to see this hollow space, this clear space. I can see some orange. That orange is at what actually is going to print out and give me plastic. But all that gray, all that kind of shadowed region, that's going to be a hollow part. Okay, so I have my hole. Let me reorient myself, and I need to move my work plane back to the bottom of this rocket. So I come up to the upper right where I have my tools, click on my helpers, click on my work plane, and I want to put my work plane right back where it started. And I can see that I've done that. I'm now at the bottom of my plane, bottom of my rocket, zoom out. Now I want to put fins on the rocket. So to do that, I'm going to pick a wedge shape for a fin, and I'm going to put it right there on my work plane. If I scroll around a little bit, I'm going to want to try to shrink this wedge down maybe a couple millimeters wide. And I'm doing that with the white boxes, and maybe make it just a little bit taller, a few millimeters taller. And I can scroll over to the side view, and I can use my arrow keys to kind of bring this rocket fin inwards. And if I zoom in, I'm really going to be able to see how close I'm getting to my rocket body. It requires kind of reorienting occasionally a little bit. And as I get closer and closer, you'll see the space will disappear. And once that space disappears, you know your fin is connected. You're going to want to try to get your fins all connected at 90 degree angles to one another. This is where uh, you need a little bit of finesse, kind of need to practice a little bit, and need, need, need to um, fiddle with the software. If I want another fin on the opposite side that looks exactly the same, I can use my copy command and paste another fin. And what I can do is I can move that fin all the way over to the other side. And I can see it's it's kind of facing the wrong direction. I need to spin it around. That's where the, all these little arrows come in. This arrow will spin my shape kind of um, around the x-axis. Uh, this one will spin around the z-axis. And, and this is the one that I want. It'll spin my fin all the way around and it'll tell me what angle I'm spinning by I want it to spin by 180 degrees exactly. And then I can use my arrow keys to reposition and get it so that it runs right into my rocket. And I have a complete rocket now.